Hi guys, welcome to a video, and in today's video I just wanted to share my lesbian book collection with you, my only child. Most of which are to be read by me. Is there anyone else in the room with us now? Please speak. That's my peach. I have actually read some of what's in this pile, but I'm including them in this video anyway. Just because this video serves as a general source of recommendation for people who want to read more lesbian literature. Especially for those who may not have seen my previous videos on lesbian book collections and so on. It's new and it's shiny. The opposite of me. <laughs> okay, so let's get into it. So first up we have The Shattered Lands, which is an enemies to lovers tale about a princess who meets a dark witch with the power to destroy her life and kingdom. God, I wish that were me. I haven't started this yet, but I'm so, so excited to read it because this sounds like exactly the type of thing I'm into. I hope this book delivers because I already have high expectations. Oh no. Stay tuned. Next up, we have Olivia, which is about the awakening passions of a young English girl who was sent away for a year to a small finishing school outside Paris. She develops an infatuation for her headmistress, Mademoiselle Julie, and through this screen of love, observes the tense romance between Mademoiselle Julie and the other head of the school, Mademoiselle Cara, in its final months. Now, this is one of my favourite books, and it's an incredible piece of work. It's so beautifully written. It's strange because this book has been sat on my shelf for years, and yet I've never reviewed it. So I'm gonna do it soon. But if you're somebody who's into vintage lesbian literature, this is a must read. It really is. Next up we have Big Swiss and this book, oh my god. It's about a sex therapist's transcriptionist who falls in love with a client whilst listening to her sessions. When they accidentally meet in real life, an explosive love affair ensues. Oh, this book is wild. It, girl, honey, baby. Now, some of you will be familiar with this book because there's an on-screen adaptation coming out where Jodie Comer plays one of the main characters. And this is exactly why I picked up the book. And, oh boy, I have a review of this book coming out very soon. I'm like two chapters away from finishing it and I have a lot to say. I have a lot to say, oh dear God. Enter this book at your own risk. That, that's all I'm gonna say. These hairs defy gravity. These hairs refuse to conform. Next up, we have The Illusionist, which is about a young girl who has an affair with her father's mistress. It's French. Fun fact, this is Rachel Weisz's favourite lesbian book. And for good reason. It is problematic, but it's delicious. I've spoken about this book a lot, so, you know, I won't spend too much time. D Next up we have A Day of Fallen Night. The cover's so beautiful. This is a prequel to The Priory of the Orange Tree and it interweaves the stories of three women from three wildly different fantastical cultures. Yet they are all united through their devotion to their loved ones and quests to hunt down the demonic worms which threaten their world. We got there in the end, okay. So I've only read a couple of chapters of this so far. And whilst this book is very female centric, I don't know how sapphic it actually is. I'm assuming it's very similar to The Priory of the Orange Tree on that front, which was mildly sapphic. And I don't want to Google it because I don't want any spoilers. So that's why I'm kind of going in blind, but I'm assuming probably I, d I don't know. I'm excited to read it anyway. But you can Google it and look at spoilers if you want. Next up we have Broderie Anglais. I'm so sorry about my French. It's disrespectful, I know. This centres on an encounter between Alexa, who is a celebrated English writer, and her rival Anne, and their discussion about their mutual lover, Lord Sean. However, in actual fact, Alexa is based on Virginia Woolf, Anne is based on Violet Trefusis, 
Lotus and Lord Sean is based on Vita Sack the West and this book basically gives Violet's perspective on the messy love triangle they were all embroiled in. This is essentially Violet's very bitter response to Virginia Woolf's novel Orlando. If you're not familiar with the very intense sapphic love triangle between Vita, Virginia and Violet, this book may not hold much appeal for you but if you have any interest in the love affair between Vita Sackville West and Virginia Woolf or the love affair between Violet Trifle and Vita Sackville West, this book is a must read. I can't wait to discuss this book with you because the tea is piping hot. It's sapphic gossip. Keeping in theme with Vita and Violet's stormy love affair, next up we have Challenge. Challenge. Which centers on the story of a young English man and the woman he loves. Together they travel to Greece where they become central figures in a political revolution, an ideal of love and a drama of jealousy and betrayal. Of course, once again, the two lovers in this novel are Vita Sackville West and Violet Trefusis, just draped in a heteronormative disguise because of the time in which this was created. But what's interesting about this book is it details their love affair at like the height of their romance. And again, if you don't have any interest in the love affair between Vita Sackville West and Violet Trefusis, this book probably won't hold much appeal for you. I mean, it might do, but probably not. I have read a little bit of this book. I'm kind of struggling with it, to be honest. Mm, I'm gonna power through and finish it and let you guys know what I think, but I don't know. I think I just haven't got to like the juice yet you know? So we'll see. And lastly, we have even more literature pertaining to the love affair between Violet Trefusis and Vita Sackville West. Why do I have so many of these books? Because I'm obsessed with their affair and this is my favourite lesbian book of all time because this book contains Vita Sackville West's autobiography detailing her very stormy love affair with Violet Trefusis. This book is highly romantic. It is and unlike the previous two books, this book is not fiction. Nobody's reinvented as a male character. She's just talking about her love affair with Violet and it's very high romance. It's very passionate and it's entertaining. Their relationship was so turbulent. This book reads like a Spanish soap opera on steroids. It does. The material inside of it is very rare. We don't often get a glimpse particularly an explicit glimpse into historical lesbian love affairs for a multitude of reasons. So this book is very interesting within a historical context, even if you're not necessarily interested in Vita and Violet and their crazy love affair. Oh my gosh. You're lucky it was just three books about Vita and Violet's affair in this collection and not 30 because it, it could be, maybe it will be. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any recommendations for lesbian literature yourself, leave it down in the comments section below. Let me know what you're reading. Let me know your thoughts. Thoughts. If you want to support lesbian content and women's voices, come and join the Sapphic Underground Club. Just come and join it. It's just a monthly tip and it supports my Vita and Violet literature love affair habit. I can quit anytime I want. Oh, I'm in control at all times, except when it comes to women. Don't forget to subscribe for instant disappointment and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.